Hey everyone, awesome one for you here. Uh, gonna show you how to remove these clamps. Now it shows I've looked it up on YouTube, you know, to say the least, um, for instructions of how to do it, and it shows one guy putting a flathead screwdriver between. If you can see, there's a small space between the the nut and the uh, the the ex the spring clamp basically is what it's called. Um, I'm going to show you a real easy way. I I was trying to pry it, trying to trying to get in there. Now I'm going to hold the board with my knees, kind of. But if you can see, which you probably can't, because it's you'll see these little these little springs come out underneath the spring clamp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a screwdriver right between them and you'll see how easy it is to... Okay, well, I can't hold the camera at the same time. I'm going to try... Try and do it this way. That'll be easier. You'll be able to see it a little bit better. You can see it's... And you don't want to make contact with the board even though I might in this one. Okay, we'll do, we'll do this one here. This one looks a little bit higher. Easy. Okay, it looks like that one was already done. But if you can see... Keep my knee up here. Oh, look how easy that is. That... We'll do it again. I'll try and... The last cup. The last couple, he shows going around three of them. You can actually almost take them off by hand, depending on what you want to do. This one I'm going to work on. On this one, actually, it's, it's right there. Okay, maybe I won't post this. It actually looks like it'll come right off. There you go. So you only have to pry out two. This is this is, uh, that was for my GPU right there. This one. Look at all that extra grease that just doesn't need to be there. I'm gonna redo mine with the Arctic uh, Arctic Silver. It's a great it's a great uh, uh, thermal grease. It's has it's a uh, 95% silver, and so it's got some great thermal qualities. And what I'm gonna do is shows the guy has a little uh, GPU cleaning. I work a lot in electronics and you could probably just buy it's probably the same exact stuff but this is what I use it's called uh, it's el electronics isopropyl alcohol it has no water in it so it's not a percentage it's a hundred percent isopropyl um, and so it will not leave water residue behind and somewhere in here, I've got... Oh, there they are. Found them. Hiding. I've got... Uh, you can use Q-tips, but I wouldn't recommend it. Because you can leave little hairs behind. These are... Uh, this is specifically for cleaning printed circuit boards. Um, you find them in... Not you won't find them in Radio Shack. Radio Shack is not a electronics per se specialty store anymore. You'd you'd have to go to like here. Our closest one is Central Utah Electronics, and uh, they specifically they don't sell like ham radios or cell phones or stuff like Radio Shack would sell. Um, they would sell just stuff to for specific for circuit boards for designing circuits they have breadboards stuff like that um, anyway that's what I'm using don't use um, the white bottle that you buy over the counter at uh, whatever store because that does have water in it this does not I paid you wouldn't think about it but I paid twenty dollars for this bottle so because I knew I'd be doing this a lot anyway don't go buy a 50 cent bottle of isopropyl because it's not the same thing. Um, that little bottle shown in a lot of the videos is probably your best bet. Anyway, um, I would show you me cleaning this, but I don't get it on my tripod. Anyway, we'll see you guys.
This is what the GPU and the CPU look like after they've been cleaned. Um, this is Arctic Silver. You can buy this on, I got it on eBay for about five bucks, including shipping. And uh, what you want to do is you just want to put a little tiny dab there on there. And a little tiny dab on this one. And a little tiny dab on that one. And what I'm going to do, I'll just leave that down there, is you want to, I've got my Best Buy result. You don't, you can use a credit card, but I wouldn't suggest it. And you want to spread, spread it evenly over the whole surface of the chip. You don't want it really thick. I've seen, uh, there's a lot, well, see, I screwed that up. And you use, use the edge. <laughs> use the edge of the, ch of the card. I'm going to take this part off because otherwise it'll get everywhere else. And there are no, you don't have any uh, wires coming out, any gold traces coming out um, of the chip, so you don't have to worry about shorting it out. But uh, my battery's running low. I'm just going to get this as even as possible. Uh, um, you can see that I kind of screwed up on that one, but like I say, there's no electrical connections. As long as you don't hit the resistors, the resistor pins, you should be okay. Um, this grease also says that it's non-conductive, non-electrically conductive, so that's a good sign as well. Um, and this one, I left a little extra on that because there's really no resistors around it or chips. Sorry, the really tiny ones are resistors and they're really, actually they could be capacitors too. And then the metal ones are, you know, transistors. Anyway. I'm going to put on the GPU um, first and make sure you put it the right way. Um, this big cutout here is where the fans go. Um, and I'm just going to, yeah, so I do it nice and evenly because you don't want to spread that stuff around on the chip necessarily. And I'm going to grab a clip, and this is the first time I've ever done it. I've never actually done this before. Okay, we got those on. I'm going to just snap this on. And snap that on. I haven't seen any videos of how to re-put these on, so... Like I say, this is it. Okay, that just snaps right back on. Okay, GPU's in place. GPU cooling, sorry, is in place. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm aligned, and then I'm going to rest it on that heat sink, so grab this other X spring clip, hook it onto that one, and snap it on, and snap it on. And there you have it. That's There's the back, back of the Xbox. This one's really dusty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my my uh, small California car duster. These work really well to take dust off and dashes and stuff. And I figure they'll take a lot of dust off of the, the box. And uh, what you want to do is you want to face this in the back here, but you'd like to put that end in first, and then this will slip down. And you do have to put some pressure because these uh, little um, connectors have springs on them, so you got to put some pressure on it. And it lays down right in there like that. And I'm going to flip it over, holding this, even though it could probably rest it on there. And I'm going to hold it because I can see some of these are not lining up. You want to line up the, uh, these are the silver silver looking screws and I've got a trying to figure out if that's this one I've got two different Torx one that came with my uh, ghost kit um, the clear case um, as you can see here um, and then I'm going to install one on the other side uh, typically on a connector 
so that it'll hold it up, uh, hold it correctly. So you can. Uh, this one has a little pin. This is for the memory memory chips. And then what I'll do is I will uh, just put those screws in. Just make sure you don't move it around a whole lot. Um, put that in that one. We've got two more, which I gotta look and see. Oh, it's right there. That's for the hard drive. That's the hard drive. And we'll put them in really quick. Sorry. And, uh, since they're going into plastic, I'm not going to over crank them. I'm going to tighten them to where they won't loosen from if this box had any vibration on it. And uh, you should notice that the holes for the uh, the heat sink uh, nuts um, should be aligned with the uh, the holes in the box because. You have to put those back in as well.